Hello, it is Nancy Chutton, and I'm the leader of the Raise Your Voice, Make Your Impact group for podcast guests who are serious about driving leads, connections, collaborations, and cash. And I'm also the creator of the podcast Visibility Live Lab that's going to be starting in just a few days, and the excitement is already building. And so every day, I try to pour tremendous value into our community so that you can learn more and earn more. And the Learn More, Earn More show is one of the best ways I have to bring luminaries to you who have world-class expertise to bring to your feet so that you can earn more, learn more, touch and transform more lives and become the amazing messenger that you have always dreamed that you could be. Today is a very special desk because I, very, very special day because I have Iman Igai here today. Iman Igai, he is the founder and CEO of Success Road Academy and the creator of the course creation formula, ultimate course creation formula. And my, oh my, if courses aren't hot right now, um, there's, I mean, they are sizzling hot. And so if you've been thinking, I think I want to start a course, I don't know what to do, I don't know what mistakes to avoid, and these kinds of things, today's interview is going to be very, very illuminating. So thank you, Iman, for being here with us today. Absolutely, Nancy. Thank you very much for having me here. It's, it's my pleasure. Now, in addition to being um, the founder of Success Road Academy and the creator of Ultimate Course Creation Formula, aren't you also the partner with Rich Gurman with Joint Venture Insider Circle? Yes, I'm a, I'm a managing partner of JVIC as well. So um, Rich and I also run the network for one of the largest JV networks of coaches, authors, speakers, program leaders, and of course, podcasters and um, and uh, people who have shows. So we connect the groups together to be able to um, uh, share their knowledge and message with, uh, with, with the world. One of the things we talked about before we went live was how important it is not to be going it alone in business. I mean, really, it's one thing to have a course, mm -hmm. but if you don't have anybody to help you sell it, it's pretty hard to go to six, seven or eight figures very fast. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Um, I always say like one of the first things you want to do is you want to uh, create a course um, to be able to monetize your knowledge and message. But then, um, but then if you just have a course and you don't have a way to promote it, then you will, um, then you will have actually a lot of other uh, challenges because then uh, you will be the world's best kept secret. You have this amazing secret um, and the course that you have created, but then now you're not getting enough clients to it. So that's why actually, well, years back, I started Ultimate Course Formula and, uh, and we trained um, uh, several thousand students. And then um, as, the, as the students were growing, I realized that the best way to be able to share their knowledge and message after their course is created is by joint venture partnership. And that's when uh, I joined in um, a JV Insider Circle and, um, and we opened that road also for all of, our, uh, all of our students to be able to build their course at Success Road Academy and then find JV partnerships at uh, JVIC. And that created huge, massive success in, uh, in our students as a result. Well, I just, you know, I, I'm one of them. Way back when, when Rich started JVIC with his former partner, I was right there in the mix learning from the best how to become an ultimate JV partner. And the education that I gained as a member of JV Insider Circle has certainly paved the path for me to create amazing relationships with people of tremendous influence. And I'm in the middle of a launch right now, and I have over 40 partners, and I learned how to create those relationships through the training that I gained as a member of JVIC. And some of the people that I've met at the live events at JVIC have become my dearest friends in life. And so I really say often that none of us succeeds alone. We have to find aligned partners that we can collaborate with, connect with, get our stupid questions answered, get support when we need it. And I know that as a, having been a member of JVIC the whole time, and even on the shark attack panel a couple of times, um, I'm a huge advocate and fan of what it is that you and Rich have created and, and built. So why now is it important to do a course? Why now more than ever? in this well, post-pandemic scenario that we find ourselves in. Right, there are several reasons. Um, let me put this cat down. 
uh, for several reasons. Um, number one, actually, um, this is an interesting thing that most people don't know, um, but people who own tools know this. Um, online course creation is the most reliable and the most profitable way of generating income online. This is actually many people don't know this. Many people like think drop shipping or have heard about like so many other ways and strategies of generating income online, investing on cryptocurrency, all of that. Uh, uh, but but the but online cre uh, online course creation is actually um, the most reliable way uh, and one of the largest industries in the world when it comes to uh, generating income online. So, what in terms of opportunity from income point of view uh, is huge. But um, the other side of that is that, well, of course, beside making money, we also want to make an impact. And there are so many other ways of generating income. And just so happens that online course creation is one of the ways that beside being the most reliable income generator industry, it's the most impactful industry as well. Because when you share your knowledge and message, you are helping people with the challenges and the fears and the frustrations and the problems that they are dealing with every single day. Uh, we have students who have created courses on how to, uh, how to get healthy, how to lose weight, how to uh, deal with a patient that uh, is going through cancer for their family, not for the patient, but just for the family, like how to deal with this. Um, lots of personal development courses, lots of marketing business, uh, lots of career development courses. And these are things that people wake up and, and have problems and challenges and, and fears and all of those things. And then you change that person's life quite literally while you are generating income for yourself. And um, when people want to make impact and income, uh, literally between all the industries that are out there, uh, online course creation and, and providing those programs stand head and shoulder above everything else um, from that point of view. So uh, at this point, online course creation is a 350 billion, 360 billion dollar industry. Uh, which is a billion dollars a day, billion dollars a day. With a, um, with a B, is that what you said? With a B, yeah, with, <laughs> with a B, it's 300, it's, it's $1 billion a day. Um, people are spending money on buying online courses. And this actually uh, probably is far more because this was supposed to be that before the pandemic hit. And um, many people right now are, uh, looking at like how much growth was during the pandemic, many people are actually estimating about $500 billion, not $360 billion, not $350 billion. So long story short, um, it's, it's super reliable. Uh, people are moving online to invest in online education. And, uh, and, and, and here's an interesting thing, Nancy, many of the universities are coming to online course creators and are asking online course creators to create courses that are not accredited for the universities. Because yes, universities provide accredited courses that like within degrees or diplomas and everything else, right? But right now we are working with universities that say, you know, we don't care about these accredited courses. The market want applied courses, courses that are about taking action. And um, we, we don't care if they're accredited or not because we are selling them as a not accredited course. So they're not gonna be part of a program. But, but you, you see how the world has changed that a university comes and says, forget about accredited course, I'll have those. I'm, I'm still gonna provide that, but I want non-accredited courses and I don't care if you have a degree, I don't care if you have this. All I care about is that it's a good course that gets people results. I love that. You know, um, continuing education and mastery are core values for me 
in particular. And I know that I've been deeply honored to be invited to teach at several universities about topics around publicity, public speaking, uh, podcast guesting, and to be a repeat guest. And so most of my experience as a teacher at the university level has been with live program delivery, which is one of the questions I have for you is there are automated courses and there are courses that are delivered live. In your experience, what do you typically advise people to do? Uh, do you want them to prove their concept before they automate or do you want them to go directly to automation? What's your point of view about that? Um, well, it's um, I, I divide courses to three levels and um, and the levels don't come just with being automated and live also comes with price point because uh, I believe knowledge doesn't change people's lives. It's knowledge mixed with accountability and support that changes people's lives. You can tell people all you want about how what type of diet they should follow. Unless you give them accountability and support, they're not going to follow that, you know? So knowledge doesn't change people's lives. It's knowledge mixed with accountability and support. However, there are many people who are interested in getting knowledge first. And then after getting knowledge, after some time, they take action and they move forward. So always divide the courses to three levels. I call the first level the interested courses. The interested courses are courses that are for people that are interested in the topic they want to gain some knowledge but they're willing to spend the price of a book or maybe a price of a very expensive book so somewhere anywhere between like twenty dollars forty dollars fifty dollars maybe two hundred forty seven dollars max and what they are looking for is just recorded content because they're looking for knowledge but not really accountability and so they're not there yet right and, and those are courses that are like on Coursera, on Udemy, on, you know, all these sites that they have recorded courses, all automated, and, um, and, and it is what it is, right? It's knowledge-based. Um, but the problem with those courses is that not a lot of people log in to actually study them. Um, so sometimes even 3% of people only log in to even see it. And, if you look at, if you think about it this way, how many PDFs have we ever downloaded and said we're gonna we're gonna read this? We're gonna we're like we don't. We just we just collect these PDFs, we just collect these logins, right? And many people have done that and um and like bought courses, never logged in, right? But then the next level after that is the qualified courses. The qualified courses are courses that are knowledge with mixed with a little bit of support. And those are the courses that personally I, I, I recommend to people to teach because these are courses that are generally between four to eight weeks of live online classes. All the students get access to the recordings of those live online classes. So if they, mix, uh, they, they missed it or they want to study earlier, they can go watch the previous class that you taught, right? And, um, and every week you show up with one homework in mind. And during the class, you teach the entire content that is related to that homework. So you don't put your focus on, um, you don't put your focus on the knowledge, you put your focus on action. And that's, that's a concept I, I invented in 2015, uh, calling, call, uh, calling it an action course. So you don't create a course to give people knowledge, you create a course to give people actions that get them results. And so um, it's four to eight pieces of homework that each homework you give people two to three hours a week work to do to be able to get that homework done. And week one, you show up, you teach, you give them homework, you give them samples of how to get that homework done, and you say, go and do it. And they go do it and they come back either on your Facebook group, LinkedIn group, any community you have, and they submit their work and you give them feedback. And then next week you give them another homework and then they go implement it, they come back, they report back. So now they're getting knowledge, but also mixed it with support. Those courses are generally priced anywhere between $500 to $2,000. Sometimes there are $3,000. Um, um, and, and, and that's kind of like a normal range for those courses, right? So $500 to $2,000, sometimes $3,000. 
And then now they're getting homework, they're getting it done, they're submitting it, now they're getting results. And then we have the third level of courses, which we call them committed courses. And the committed courses are knowledge, accountability, and support. So we also add accountability there. Because with a, with a qualified course, if the person doesn't come back to submit their homework, you're not going to go knock on their door and say, hey, what is your homework, right? But then the committed level, then you're like, I'll give you knowledge, I'll give you homework, and I'll put you in an accountability group. And every week you report on the accountability group on what you did. Every week you will, you will have the option to talk to a mentor or every month you have an option to continue. So, so the, the package is, de is dependent obviously to the price that you charge, right? Um, but then now at that point, those courses are called the committed courses. People who take those courses are people who are committed to get results. They want to get the job done, right? And they are, those courses begin at anywhere from $5,000 and then go up. And the up actually really like there are people who charge a million dollars for like their program. Uh, but, but remember, this is not just a recorded online course. This is a mixture of using the internet for the, the transferring the knowledge, but also there is accountability groups, so there are support groups, there are office hours where the person can actually book the time, get there, ask their questions. Sometimes they're mixed with one-on-one -on -one mentorship. So the person is going online and you get one-on-one -on -one mentorship. And now you have that full range of all the courses. Now, what do I recommend to people? Where do I recommend to people to begin with? I recommend to people to begin with a qualified course. And I have a reason for that. A qualified course, a $500 to $2,000 course, has one of the most amazing benefits of being a two-way communication. So you teach, and then the students can ask you questions. As the students ask you questions, you can improve your course. So if this is the very first time you teach it, you don't want to record it because you don't want to pre-record it because you don't know what people are going to ask. You don't know like what's going to happen, right? So I always recommend to people to begin with a qualified course. It's also higher price. It's $500 to $2,000. It's also better to get results. So when you are teaching it, your students get better results. So now you have more testimonials. So it fixes so many of the issues, but there's also another benefit to it. You can sell a qualified course before it's created. Not only you can, but you should. Okay, so that's a, that's a very important thing because the way the best way to create an online course, which we teach at Ultimate Course Formula. Now I'm not going to go to the details because we don't have the time to like go over 20 hours of like what to do exactly, right? Uh, but like, but one of the best ways of doing it is to do a specific type of market research. We call that Iman's Eight Golden Questions, where you ask people about their challenges and their fears and their frustrations, what they want to learn, what they want to see in a package, and the price point they're willing to pay. And then you ask them at the last, at, at the last question you ask them is that if I decided to teach this course, would you like to be one of my first students? If I decided to teach this course, would you like to be one of my first students, right? And these people, while they're doing their market research with you, they are telling you, yes, I would love to be part of, or they say, no, I don't, right? We generally get anywhere between 65% to 85%, 90% yeses. And this is while you're doing market research. So by the time that you have done 20 market researches, you have 13 to 17 or 18 people who have said, I would love to be one of your first students or I would like to have the information on your first course, right? And then you go back to them two weeks later when you know exactly what you want to create based on this research and say, this is the, this, this is the start date and this is the exclusive offer for the first group of people who are going through it. Now, remember, these people know it's the first time so they're not going to ask you what's the testimonial, or how many times you're literally telling this the first time, but it's live and I'm going to get on the phone. I'm going to teach you. So nobody says where is the recording before the course begins because it's live, right? And, and that's actually how universities sell courses. You go pay 
you choose the course, you pay for it, and then the course begins. Nobody goes to university and says, well, where is the recording of this? I just paid for it, right? Because that's how the education industry works. The education industry, you get paid up front and then you teach, which with this, as you are teaching the live over the next six weeks, people show up and they're enjoying it and they're giving you feedback and every week you are working. And, and if the course isn't going well, well, then you do better. You pick up the phone, you talk to clients one-on-one, -on -one, you understand what's getting in the way, which makes you a better mentor. Love that. I so love that. It's so beautiful the way you've broken that down and it, 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 it really clears things up for, for me and for lots of other people. So when it comes down to the, I mean, when you do your market research and you find a problem that's keeping people up at night and people say, yes, I, I definitely would pay a meaningful tuition to have that problem solved and you are the expert that I want to learn from, you can go and cur you know, curate your amazing clients and build the social proof and get on with it. When we think about all the different niches that there are and all the different kinds of problems that there are to be solved, are there some courses that sell better than others in today's environment? And if so, what are they? Uh, Nancy, uh, the, the answer to that probably is yes, but I always feel um, that's a question that should never be answered. And I'll tell you why. And I'll, I'll have a reason for it. Okay. Because I think the focus of an online course creator should not be on what to teach to make the most amount of money. It should be on what's the expertise that I have that can make the biggest impact. And, and when you focus on your expertise and what makes the biggest impact, you will come up with two or three or four options. And between your options, you should choose. But if you begin with what makes the most amount of money, the answer might be Bitcoin today or a cryptocurrency, or maybe it be it is like, um, I don't know, career development or marketing or sales, right? But then if the person doesn't have the expertise for it and they are trying their best to create that course, they end up creating a not, creating course that's not the best course. And here is the problem. There are so many people that came out in this industry that made a million dollars, two million dollars, five million dollars in a year. And then they disappeared and lost all that money because, of course, they weren't able to deliver what they promised or they weren't the best at it. So I always recommend to come to this from this point of view. That's like, what's the, what are the things that I can teach that I can make the biggest impact in people's lives? And let me do the market research to see what it is that people want and see between the things people want, what I can choose. Now, between those, you have two or three or four options. And between your options, you will ask yourself this, which one of these gives me the lifestyle? Which one of these gives me the money that I want? And let me explain. For example, when I started teaching online course creation, one of the things I never wanted to do was providing people tech support. I didn't want to tell people, click here, click there, go there, I mean, like that, that bores me death right so when i when I, I i had actually 12 options so i put all these 12 options on my wall and i'm like so which one of these i want and so one of my categories was future income potential so when i teach this to people then are there other things that people want to learn right so in my options i had public speaking i had book writing i had course creation i had all of these things as options right and then I was like, well, number one, which one of these has better future income potential? So I looked at them and I'm like, okay, public speaking has great future income potential for me uh, because after they learn how to speak, now they got to go find the stage. Now I can actually put them on pro programs to teach them how to find the stage and so on and so forth, right? Book writing, when they write their book, they have to write their book, they have to publish their book, they have to market their book. So it's like future income potential for me. Course creation, they create their course. Right? So the first thing you do is you ask yourself, when, this, when they finish with this course, what else can I provide them? And, and one of the mistakes that uh, people who create their course for the first time make is that they think they have to put everything in one course, which you think it's a good thing, but it's an awful thing to do. Because when the students see all these like 
million things I need to do, they say, oh, this is too hard. I don't want to do it. But when these are broken down to smaller pieces, they look at it, they're like, yeah, I can do that. I want to do, I, I told I want to do this. And they go and do it and get results, um, which is good for them. And it's good for you. And it's good like for everything, right? Now, can I ask, can I ask a question about that? Totally, yeah. Um, one of my core values is generosity. Yeah. So I teach a course that helps people book themselves on the right podcast without hiring a book, an expensive booking agency. And so mm -hmm. I have a six pillar system that I teach people and there's implementation, there's accountability, there's support, there's all these things. But I also um, do live office hours. And because I've been in the online marketing world for the last 20 years, I certainly know a whole lot more about online marketing than I than is than to be more than slightly dangerous let's put it that way mm -hmm. so when i get into office hours sometimes people ask me questions that are outside the scope of the course that we are teaching right. and um that's been something i've been wondering about is like how do we keep our eye on the ball how do we how do we how do we manage when people ask questions outside the scope of what the, we're teaching do we invite them into private coaching do we tell them that that's what we cover in the next course or do we go the extra mile or is it some combination uh well people people will give you different answers of course for this but i always say the money you pay me doesn't change me but changes my commitment to you what does that mean to me that means that for example if uh, you're in my program and you're in front of me and you're asking me a question as long as answering this question does not bother other people on the call, I'm more than happy to answer it. But I'm not going to follow up with you, see what happened and everything else. I can be sitting in a bar. Somebody comes beside me and says, hey, you know, I think you're Iman. And I'm like, yeah. I said, well, let me ask you a question about business. And if they ask me, I'll answer them the same as I answer my $100,000 mentorship student. The difference is that I may even buy them a beer because they recognize me. I'm like, hey, let me get you a beer, right? So I answer their questions, I get them a beer too. But then I get up and go, and I never think twice about what this guy did. But with my mentorship students, two weeks later, I get back, I ask them all oh, what you did, right? Now, I'm going with this because it's like, uh, it's I answer people within the, within the patience of the program, right? However, one of the things I would do with the students, I would, I would go through the eight golden questions with them and, uh, and, and, and see what it is they want. And I would provide a higher end program to them that would provide the next level because they definitely need it. Every person has a problem, right? And they are willing to, some, some, for some problems, they're willing to pay. And if you are providing that higher end program, year long mastermind, one-on-one um, -on -one mentorship program where you are making the biggest difference and there's like 40% of your students right now want to go to that level. Well, it's, of course you should provide that and not only answer, but also keep them accountable. Because you can answer as much as you want and that's gonna be free. But if you wanna answer and keep them accountable to get results, you gotta charge for it and they're willing to pay for it. and everybody gets better results. Yes, brilliant answer, I love that. Now, here's another question. Online course creation is a hot thing. It's a huge market. Many of us are buying courses, many of us are leading courses, but there are some people for whom technology is not their favorite thing. What do you have to say to those people? Uh, number one, uh, it depends on the type of a course that you build and you create. Um, it, it defines the level of the uh, technology that you get involved in, okay? So, uh, for example, if you're teaching a live online course through Zoom, um, the level of technology is just understanding Zoom and being able to upload your recording to a membership platform, which a membership platform like Thinkific, it is T-H-I-N-K-I-F-I-C. Uh, it's a drag and drop. So you just drag and drop, automatically gets uploaded, the course is there, you press save. So, or that can be given to a virtual assistant 
to be done, right? So you show up, you teach the course, and a virtual assistant do it for you. As long as you're charging the right price, you can afford uh, the right assistant, right? Um, the problem is that we don't charge right, so we don't have uh, perfect results of that. So um, now, now here is one thing. Um, you and I right now are sitting here, we're having conversations, probably people are taking a lot of notes, and yet um, we're not using any PowerPoints, we're not using any, any whiteboard, we're not using anything, we're just sitting here having conversations. And actually, I have taught courses, like three-day weekends, for $18,000. That I showed up with absolutely no PowerPoint, no nothing, right? And it was an experience for people and it was a facilitation. So a course is not just the content, it's not just the technology. Sometimes one of the biggest powers of a course creator is the community and the facilitation of the conversations of that community. So again, the meaning of an online course can play a very, very, very important role in, in that. Now, let's say, for example, you want to teach content and you want to pre-record everything and you want, again, which you want to make all the mistakes from my point of view. From my point of view, that's all the mistakes. That's like a person says, I want to create a course. I want to have perfect PowerPoints. I want to have perfect videography. I want to have perfect landing pages. I want to have perfect this, perfect that. Well, if you want to do that, that would cost you $25,000. And there are companies that do that done for you. Um, the problem is that you don't know after everything perfect came out, anyone is going to buy it. So I recommend not to do that. Instead, put together a page on a Word document, sell it by getting people's credit card information and process on a Stripe over, uh, like over phone, and then provide the course through Zoom and just see if people are buying, are going through the program, are enjoying it. You sell the course, you sell 20 packages at $500 for the first time, you made 10K. Now you have made 10K and you're like, okay, how can I reinvest it, this 10K back in my business? Build a membership site, get a virtual assistant, get a person who's graphic designer and do all the rest if you want to go that path of making perfect. Even if you want to make, go the path of making it perfect, do it first time imperfectly, make the money and reinvest it back again in your business. I love that. You know, I came to this work having been in corporate life for 15 or more years where being polished, perfect, and PowerPointed was highly valued. And what I've discovered as an online entrepreneur that has been a game changer for me is the de degree to which I can actually connect with the people that I'm teaching and be a human being first and to deliver the content in a way that people can understand it, apply it, and succeed with it matters a whole lot more than how beautiful my slides are. I feel this so strongly about this that I don't even use slides when I lead my podcast Visibility Live Lab. I just want to look right into the camera and look right into your heart, right into your soul, and de demonstrate that I'm the teacher you've been looking for. And I just bring that up because I, this word, my sister is a therapist, and she talks about people who perseverate. You perseverate over perfectionism, and then you end up alone in your room with fewer than two dimes to rub together. If you could just get over yourself and get on with it, you could actually be in the room with people who need the solution that you're providing and the way that you are providing it. Yes, exactly. And, and that whole connection piece is a really interesting and a appropriate thing to a segue this conversation, because if we have a course and we've followed the golden questions and we've crafted it in such a way that it's strategic and savvy and we are the right people to teach it and we have the expertise to bring it. And I always add also, and you love teaching about that because yes. if you don't love teaching about that, nobody's gonna, that, that's just not a good recipe. <laughs> well, that's a good life for you. Even if people are buying it, you end up hating every single day of your life doing things you don't like to do, but makes you money. We call the golden handcuffs, right? right? It's like they're handcuffs, but they're golden. So you're like, I have much gold, but in handcuffs, you right. know? Like, and, and that's, I mean, 
why would you do that? Yeah, so think about that, people, as you're watching. So getting back to the connection piece, some people are um, create this course and they have a small community of people with whom they have collaborated to create the course, to know that the course has legs to run. But then it becomes important to sell the course to people who are paying attention. And we've heard it called list shame. I've got list shame. There's not enough people on my list to um, drive the numbers to the degree that they need to be driven in order for this to be worth, well worth my while. What do you have to say who, to people who, who are earlier in their journey that don't yet have a list and how important is it for people to learn how to connect with others so that they can lift each other up while they climb? Uh, okay, so one of the things actually, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna actually kind of uh, switch gears toward uh, joint venture partnerships here. And there are uh, lots of misconceptions. And Nancy, I think might not be a bad idea that right now we also tell people about collaborate because there's lots of education and training in collaborate um, that can help. So, um, one of the things that. Uh, well, let's I first describe what is collaborate. Is it live? Is, is it virtual? And when is it? Yeah, let me explain. Okay, thanks. Perfect. So, okay. So, um, so one of the things I would like to provide um, everyone who is listening to this, watching this, um, is a ticket to come to attend uh, the Collaborate event. And then you can, you can get a free ticket and then you can upgrade to a VIP ticket if you want to be and, and come to the actual event. Um, but during Collab Collaborate is a three-day event where during this three-day event, we'll talk about joint venture partnerships, different types of joint venture partnerships. And if you are a VIP attendee, then you will also get the chance to network with all the other VIP attendees uh, where there we have podcasters, we have people who are uh, hosting YouTube shows, we have people who have large mailing lists, we have people who are having who have uh, Facebook groups and a lot of different ways to be able to promote others. Okay, so first of all, we highly recommend to you to come and attend the upcoming collaborates. That one is June 24th to 26th from 8 a.m. Pacific time to 5 p.m. Pacific time. And again, you can get a free ticket uh, where you can watch the event and learn, or you can upgrade uh, for $47 to be a VIP attendee. And simply put, uh, of course, we don't get rich on the $47, but uh, the reason we have that 47 bucks is because we want to see that people see value in really networking for three days with other people. So, um, but then regardless, whether you just wanna watch or you just wanna come and play and, 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 and meet other people, we highly recommend you to come to collaborate to learn all of these in depth because of course my next answer is gonna be three minutes as opposed to three days of education of, uh, of, of, of joint venture partnership, right? Well, let me just find... stop you for just a second because your, your, your language was a little hard to understand there. It's a virtual event mm -hmm. that's happening June 24th to the 26th from eight to 5 p.m. Pacific time. It's virtual. So wherever you are in the world, if you wanna connect and collaborate and learn how to, uh, acquire best practices around connecting with other people of influence so that you can invite them to advocate for your course and perhaps you, you could advocate for theirs. The collaborate virtual event could be an answer to a prayer that will give you that education and that practice connecting with other human beings so that you can create those relationships. When I started this call, I mentioned that at my at JVIC, I've always been a front row gal. I don't think I mentioned that, but I remember being at the last JVIC event, JVX, and I was wearing a royal blue dress and I was sitting in the front row and another woman was sitting in the front row wearing a royal blue dress. We looked at each other and it was like we were friends for a lifetime from the moment we met and we are still co-collaborating. We are still great friends. We are still connected. We still, I mean, it's the, the people you meet when you actually show up live or virtually at an event can change your life and change your business. So if you're not, if you need to get repeopling again after being behind uh, the pandemic walls, I think this is something that you should do. And so I'm going to do it. And um, I want to share something very exciting about this also. Uh, I mentioned at the top of this call that I'm leading the podcast visibility live lab next week, 
And of course, you're all invited. And of course, you'll probably be wondering, well, why am I doing that? Because I have an amazing course that I'll be inviting you to participate in. And should you decide to say yes to the Broadcast Your Brilliance Bootcamp, your $47 virtual VIP ticket to collaborate is part of your bonus package. If you decide you want to do this outside of Broadcast Your Brilliance, you're looking at a $47 investment. I think you can afford it. And so I'm going to drop in the show notes a link where you can claim your place at Collaborate so that you can save that date because my course starts on June 22nd. This starts on June 24th through the 26th, and it is going to be the perfectly aligned way for you to not only learn how to broadcast your brilliance, but also do it with people (laughs) (laughs) who are actually interested in what it is that could be blooming between you. So I just wanted to insert that in there, Iman. So now we know what Collaborate is and we know when it is and we know why it's awesome. And it's certainly, you know, give up a few cups of coffee, you can easily afford it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And thanks for the uh, clarification. So now you're beginning, you don't have a big size list. Um, and, and then uh, you feel like you're going to be list shamed, uh, which means that other people say your list size is not big enough that I want to promote you. Uh, so here, here, here is the thing. There are five types of promotions that you can ask joint venture partner, or there are five motivations for joint ventures to promote you. And one of the promotions are called favor motivated promotions, which is I'll promote you when you promote me. It's called favor motivated promotion, meaning that I am promoting you, so you promote me. I am doing you a favor, so you do me a favor. Right, so or or also called the reciprocal promotion, reciprocating promotion. Okay, now, but that's only one of the five motivations. Now, remember, you also have fans and friends, and many people want to promote you because they're your fans. They don't want you to promote them back. They want to promote you because of the change you've made in their lives. One of the benefits of teaching your course even before you're known is because many of those students go back and promote you back, even if you have zero people on your mailing list. So the fans and friends, one of the most important groups of people that in our business actually was looking the other day, going through all our joint venture partners. And interesting enough, 50% of our business comes from people who bring only one or two people to our business. And yes, we have people who have brought 65 people, 55 people, right? But then when you when we add those people who have brought 65 and 55 and 100 customers, and then those people who just brought one or two or four, the total is 50-50. So you, not everybody needs to have a large list and not everybody wants to, do, uh, wants to go through that. So that's, the, that's one thing. It's like, remember that your fans and friends are very important. Number two is favor motivated. Number three is content motivated. And content motivated is one of the things that Nancy is actually going to share with you because she's going to help you to land on different podcasts, land on different places, different shows. And guess what? These people are looking for content. They are not looking for your mailing list size. Of course, if you have a bigger list, everybody wants to promote, but that, but, but that's not... The, but that's not everything. Remember that many of these people who are doing podcasts, they are doing daily podcasts. Many of these people are doing weekly podcasts. And as they are doing these weekly podcasts, they are looking for guest experts. They are looking for guest experts and you have expertise. So you are going to be there for your content, not for your list size. And then we have the money motivated ones. The money motivated ones are people that promote you because they want to get paid. So you say, if you send me customers, I'll pay you for this customer. When I had my web design and search engine optimization company about 10 years ago, 80% of my referrals were from fans and friends who were money motivated. 
friends and friends who are money motivated because they have multiple motivations, right? So I would work with a person, I would design a website for them, it was like 2,500 bucks, whatever it was, right? And I would say, well, you like it when you are launching your website, send a message to a few of your friends and say, hey, you know, I'll just launch my new website, give me some feedback. And then when they give you feedback, just say, hey, you know, do you like me to introduce you to the web designer who did this for me? I don't pay you 500 bucks for every one of those people you sent to me. And so many of them, some of them were like, didn't want to do it, like whatever, they were shy, whatever. Some of them actually went and, and many of them ended up getting their website for free because I paid them five, 500 bucks, but then I made $12,500 and I paid. So many people are money motivated. And, and again, none of these people are large lists. They're just a regular business owner, but I had a system and I had money for it. Like I would say, I'll pay you if you're a customer to me. So the money motivated ones also are great. And then the last one I call the credibility seekers. The credibility seekers are people that want to promote you for your credibility. And sometimes you're looking at me, you're like, Iman, I don't even have a list. How would I have credibility? Remember this, you build your credibility with marketing, but you can lose or reinforce your credibility with delivery. What does that mean? That means that when you are naming things, name them for credibility. So other people say with pride, I was part of this project. I had a friend of mine, his name was Jonathan Chow, several years back, he put together an event and he named it Vancouver's biggest ever business barbecue party. And I asked him, I'm like, Jonathan, have you ever done a barbecue party before? He's like, never. I said, have you ever done a business party before? He's like, not really. Well, within 45 days, he got 30 joint venture partners, all large business networks in Vancouver, promoted this event because all of them wanted to say we were part of the largest business barbecue party. Mm -hmm. And he had 540 tickets. He sold 540 tickets before the event. Uh, and then there was a lineup the size of a block that was waiting to get inside the party. Now, he didn't have a list when he did that. He didn't have any of those things, right? Now, he could, so you build your credibility with marketing, with the way that you name things, with the way that you talk about them, with the way, but then he could lose his credibility if people would show up and there was no barbecue. People would show up and there was no quality to the content. There was no like, you build your credibility with marketing, you lose or reinforce it with delivery, okay? So just um, keep this in mind. It's not about your list size only. There are other motivations and, and the, one of the best ones is definitely your content and getting content motivated, which is what Nancy is sharing with you and which is what Collaborate can also connect you with, with all those podcasters and everything. That's a beautiful explanation. And thank you so much for that. You know, I've been living in the content motivated training space for a very long time when I wrote my Bye Bye Boring Bio workbook and got more than slightly famous for it. And of course, when the pandemic hit, I shifted to teaching people about podcast guesting because we were all sheltering in place and how empowering it can be to actually be able to speak up and share your message around the world and around the block without leaving your house. Seems very timely and relevant and of service. I bring this up because when you have brilliant content to share, it is the great equalizer if you have ever dealt with list shame. Because if you've got something provocative and compelling to say, and you can say it in a brilliant way, and you can turn the head of a host who would be interested in that, it doesn't matter how big your list is. It matters what you have to say about it and how you deliver on it and how great of a rapport you create while you're talking about it. And when you are asked at the end of the interview, where next can we go to take a step closer in your direction, you're gonna have that front and center and you're gonna be able to lasso those listeners to become your new subscribers, your new discovery calls, your new whatever it is. And so what, I am inviting you to do as a result of meeting Iman Igai today is I would like you to 
take your virtual front row seat at Collaborate on June 24th to the 26th from eight to five so that you can practice everything that we've talked about today and get a three-day immersion experience that will help you crystallize what you're planning to do and with whom you're planning to promote it with so that your star can rise right along with your income. So um, what more can we say? Of course, I'll be dropping a link to the Collaborate ticket in the chat. And I also want you to know that when you make the wise choice to join me as a new client in the Broadcaster Brilliance Bootcamp, your Collaborate VIP ticket is included in your bonus package. And the timing of it could not be better because the course starts, my course starts, it's live on June 22nd and Collaborate starts on June 24th, 26th. Talk about total immersion. You are not going to be able to stop yourself from being successful with the kind of world-class expertise that I'm bringing to your table. So Iman, what closing thoughts do you have? I mean, tell a story about someone who created a course and ended up making impact and influence and income, even maybe starting out from a, low, uh, a, a junior place. Well, um, just so many of them. And uh, um, you know what? I can actually tell you one who is a JV, JV insider circle. You'll probably remember her. Jane Duncan Rogers. Do you remember Jane Duncan Rogers? No, I think she was actually before I was. Okay, well, let me just tell this story. Jane Duncan Rogers lost her husband when he was in his 50s because of some horrible incident. And she was totally unprepared to lose her husband. And so as they got this diagnosis, they started realizing that they had a lot to talk about to help get him ready to go because it was going to be a somber, you know, it, it was going to be an exit. Well, she got the idea as a member in JVIC to create Before I Go Solutions, which is an organization that teaches people how to make plans to exit life be, when they have a runway to know. And she's since gone on to create a multiple six-figure business certifying other people in her Before I Go Solutions method so that they can touch and transform lives in transition wherever they are in the world. And now she has a course and she has a certification and she has partnerships with important organizations that believe in her work and refer work to her. And all that happened at a JVIC live event where she got the brilliant idea that she could turn this germ of an idea into thriving business and look at her now. And I would be remiss if I did not say that Jane Duncan Rogers of Before I Go Solutions has just recently graduated the Broadcast Your Brains Bootcamp. And she booked herself on 16 to 18 shows in 12 weeks. And she did such a brilliant job of it that now hosts are calling her to ask her to be a guest without her even having to pitch. So there's an example of someone who got an idea for a course by being in your world, who subsequently created the course, brought the course to life, had created a certification program, and now is a more than slightly famous Before I Go Solutions provider. Jane Duncan Rogers is her name. Uh, she's a star on the rise with her income to prove it, but most importantly, the impact is crystal clear. And so there's a, there's a story for you that you should be really proud of because it started with your organization. Uh -huh. Yeah, actually, uh, you know, on that, we had very similar story of also Jackie Simmons, who started the Teen, uh, teen Suicide Prevention Society. And the exact copy and paste of the story you were saying, except for it was for teen suicide. And there are 3,000 teens a day who uh, who commit suicide, who, uh, who um, I don't remember, the, who tried to commit suicide. I don't remember it exactly. Uh, the, the right wording around it, but yeah, but 3,000 teens a day, and um, yeah, and so Jackie, actually, a very similar story, uh, she was, she was leading her event based on what we teach at uh, JVIC, and um, and so she had, she had learned all the basics and everything at JVIC, she was implementing her own event, in the middle of her own event, uh, she uh, heard the story of her daughter, uh, who um, who uh, tried to commit suicide and anyways um, that inspired her to um, 
started in suicide prevention society and exact copy of face uh, uh, everything you mentioned here but then for the teen suicide and of course there are lots of people who have created programs related to health related to uh, wellness related to business and lots of other things that have made huge massive impact in the world. well and is that's so rewarding and so i want to say one more thing that we haven't yet said is that i've been mentioning throughout this interview that i was with I was a member of JVIC when it was a brand new entity and it's been in business for multiple years and has grown to serve and transform thousands and thousands of messengers with stories to share and expertise to offer. Well, it's a $997 investment to become a member of JVIC, but because of my relationship with the great people at JVIC, I have procured JVIC memberships for everyone who joins the Broadcast Your Brilliance Bootcamp, which is an incredible value. So not only are you going to get to go to JV, participate and get educated with JVIC for a year long membership, you're going to get your VIP ticket to the virtual collaborate event. And you also get to go to JVX in October in Irvine. I think this is like a $1,200 bonus value that is yours as a bonus when you say yes to joining me in the Broadcast Your Brilliance Bootcamp. And why does this matter? Because what I hear from people about why they're, they're stuck in the getting ready to get ready club and they're not ready to launch for some reason, I have carefully curated with world-class experts, the most savvy strategic solutions to bridge any gaps that may be existing in your skill set, so that you have no excuses but to get on with it as soon as possible. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We don't know if we're going to have another crazy virus. We don't know if you're going to get hit by a truck. We don't know if there's going to be some illness that's going to befall your, your family. Don't wait in the green room when you could be on stage sharing your message, delivering it with impact and accountability and all the other elements. So I hope you're excited that you got to meet Iman Igai today because I think that what he's got to bring to the party is incredibly valuable. And I hope that when you see the link to collaborate, you will claim your ticket. And if you have not yet signed up for the Podcast Visibility Live Lab, I'm going to drop the link to that too. It's podcastvisibilitylivelab.com. We start on the 6th. We're going to blow your mind and you're probably going to book yourself on shows before the week is out. I hope you're in with me and I'm on. You're not going to want to miss a moment of the magic that's straight ahead. Anything more you want to say before we close this out? I just want to say thank you very much for all the work that you do and, uh, and all your support and um, also the great work that you do with all your students and, um, and the way that you're giving voice to people who should uh, share their uh, share their message and, and you're having people to have that voice. So thank you very much for all your work. Well, thank you. None of us succeeds alone. And I'm so glad that I crossed paths with you and Rich and Milana all these many years ago and that we're still in relationship today. I think how you do anything is how you do everything. So make friends every step of the way. Someone said to me the other day, I so appreciate the way you treat me, even though I feel like a guppy on my journey. You know, you know what? I remember feeling like a guppy on my journey. And I think it's 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 always like feels a lot more recent than it is right now. So let's keep lifting each other up as we're climbing. Let's keep connecting and collaborating with amazing thought leaders who can take us to the next level. Iman, it was so generous of you to share so much value today. If you're watching this live and you got value, won't you please post in the chat your favorite takeaway point? And I will be posting this video to YouTube. And if you feel that this is something you wanna share with everyone you know, may I please ask you to do that? I would be so grateful. And I know Iman would appreciate it as well. So with that, um, raise your voice, make your impact as a podcast guest. Be sure to tune into the next edition of Learn More, Earn More. You will learn more and earn more when you subscribe and make every one of these expert guest strategies part of your own success plan. So, man, thank you so much for being here, and we will see you soon. Thanks. Look forward to it. All right. Thank you.